I'm going to be preaching starting tonight on a six-part series. I'm going to be preaching on anxiety, a six-part series, the next six or five Sunday nights after tonight, dealing with anxiety. It has become a very uh, hot topic or a major event that is occurring in the lives of uh, Christians, and so I want us to be able to hit it head on to understand what it is, and we'll walk through it and kind of have a good series and some studying uh, around uh, anxiety and what it what it does. But if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn with me to Philippians 4. I'll be reading verse 4 through 9. Philippians 4, chapter 4, verse 4 through 9. Now think about anxiety and when you look up just a simple definition of it, it says that it is an intense, and that's just what it is. It is intense, excessive, and persistent worry and fear about everyday situations. It causes your heart rate to increase, your breathing to increase, sweating to increase, and fatigue to set in. That's, that's what this thing is. And that's, listen, the devil is playing games with the Christian. I know it's, it's not just a Christian, but it's, it's hitting us, and it should not be because we got Jesus. But I want to talk about this tonight and what it is. And some of the causes is, is listen, it's normal to have anxiety in, uh, in situations like if you're not used to public speaking and you've got to get up in front of then you're obviously going to feel a little bit of it's a normalcy anxiety. If you have to take a test and you go into college, you go take a test or you in, in any type of test, you, you'll feel a little bit of anxiety. But this thing that the devil's playing with tonight is much deeper than taking a test or uh, a, a public speaking form of anxiety. And some things to know, some causes or some, some causes of anxiety is it says trauma, stress due to illness, stress buildup. That's just a few that, that it had had named, and then it kind of goes on down and it gives a little bit of treatments and uh, some of the experiences and all of, all of those things if you just continue to Google it and look it up. But I want, us, I want us to go into the Word of God tonight, and I want us to deal with this devil, this demon uh, called anxiety, and we're going to deal with it in the form of what I would say is an opposite or a remedy to anxiety. If I feel anxious, what do I do? We say Jesus, but I'm going to give you some, some things that, that are simple. But Paul said here, he said, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, I underline that, and the peace of God. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. And the peace, somebody say peace. And the peace of God. I'm anxious tonight. I'm, I've got an intense movement of the adversary, of worry, or fear. But he said here, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. Don't know where it came from. Shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. In the last verse, it said, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace and the God of peace, and the God of peace shall be with you. Now, I want us to, to talk just a, a, a little bit tonight, just for, for a, brief, a brief moment as we start to deal with anxiety. I'm going to deal with it tonight with a, a powerful and much needed noun. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna break this noun down called, called peace, the prince of peace. Peace is this, freedom from disturbance or tranquility. Okay, we've been we living in a time tonight where uh, we 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 need peace on every every avenue, every turn, every battle, every morning that we get up to put our feet. The devil is there lurking in the balance. I'm telling. Listen, and he's not just working on just just the center folk, and he's not just working on the folks that's kind of lukewarm half in, but he's working tonight on the Christian. 
I'm talking about you, folks that's uh, on our way to heaven, folks that have our hands around uh, Jesus tonight. And, uh, and, and this thing tonight that we're going to deal with this now, we're going to talk a lot about peace. To find peace, Paul, he starts to uh, encourage the Philippians. And he tells them to rejoice. He stresses to them to, to replace anxious to replace anxiety, to replace this intense uh, worry and fear with prayer and with thanksgiving. Now, what he, now you heard Brother Stalvey, he preached on this a little bit this morning, but it's going directly to the throne of God with what we need. The devil worries, he, he takes you through this intense worry or fear that tries to grip you. But on the other hand, Paul said, he said, look, if you'll just drop that, he said, I just want you to have a little talk with Jesus. You know, when they wrote that old red hymn book, sometimes we, we just, we, so we don't even like them anymore. Oh, we've just kind of, it just becomes so immune to us, we throw them down. But sometimes I like to go back to them, them little songs and flip into that page 333 and that little red back hymn book. And so I just want to have a little talk with Jesus. Just a little talk with Jesus does me right. Just a little talk with Jesus. Can I tell you tonight, this is what Paul is talking about when he introduces us to this thing called peace. He's carrying us back into a a time in our life where we have to have a little talk with Jesus. If we want to have a little talk, we want to find him. Peace, encouraging. He stresses to replace this anxious with prayer and thanksgiving. Now, the Philippians, they're, they're praying, they're praying for and they're financially supporting Paul. They're taking very good care of him. Now, listen, these folks, and they're not the Philippians are not poor folk, they're poor folks. Poor folk mean we, we left the R off. They're so poor, we, we, don't, we, we don't even want to put a, a value that on. They're just poor folk, and that's, that's where they are. They're so poor. But yet, because they believe in what God's about to do, that they take everything they have, they scrape everything they have, they just keep scraping and keep scraping, and they're funding Paul and his ministry, and they're continuing to, to invest in him, and they're supporting him financially. And because of this, Paul begins to kind of tell us how blessed he is because of what they're doing. I thought about Mark Twain made a, a comment one time, and it said, uh, the statement said, comparison is the death of joy. And this is where, this is what the, the opposite of anxiety is, is peace and joy. The opposite of anxious is peace and joy. And we're going to deal with lots of these subjects and words and, and nouns over these next uh, few weeks. But he said, comparison is the death of joy. Anxiety comes as joy is removed. Anxiety creeps in when we allow peace to slip out. Anxiety comes in when uh, we forget to uh, call on the name Jesus, when we forget what it's like to really just communicate with Jesus. There's nothing like getting a hold, regardless of how educated and sophisticated and how much knowledge you have, there's nothing that can take hold of knowing who Jesus is. Because I said there's nothing. There's nothing like grabbing hold of Jesus. There's nothing like knowing his name. And Paul's realizing this as he's talking to us tonight about what's occurring as he's writing to this Philippian church. He founded this Philippian church. He founded this church. Well, he was on his second missionary journey. He'd done been through that one time, but on his second journey through, he, there's something just began to stir on him. Something just began to stir on and he began to write a letter while he was imprisoned in Rome. And you think you got problems. You think the little bitty episodes that you deal with is a, a problem. Paul's sitting here, he come through and he's made a second journey through and he starts to ride and he gets a group of folks together, founds his church and then all of a sudden now he's in prison in Rome and he's starting to write back to them and talk to them about how awesome that our God is. Now listen, Satan tonight, he'll take the little bittiest thing in your life and he'll make you become anxious, a deep fear, deep worry. It'll put you in a place and... That there's, uh, I think about just, just some of the current events that's taking place with suicide and how folks' minds just gets locked down on certain things and the devil takes them quickly to the bottom of the barrel. He takes them quickly uh, to the worst outcome. He gets them caught up emotionally in their feelings and he puts them in this place and it begins to, the voices start to enter into your head and that anxiety, that anxiousness starts to rise. And while you may not see anxious, it is real. While you may not be able to touch 
anxious. Your body can feel it, and it will weigh you down. But I'm coming to tell us tonight, as we deal with this over these next few weeks, I want us to understand tonight uh, that we're not in this room to compare ourselves to nobody. Uh, we're not inside this room uh, to compare with the Joneses across the street uh, or the church down the road uh, or the neighbor up the road uh, or the big house down here uh, or what they drive over there uh, or what the dress code is here. Uh, but my God, uh, Mark, Mark Twain made a, a very powerful comment. Comparison is the death of joy. That's what's wrong with a lot of folks today. We got our minds on all these. Listen, your mind tonight uh, shouldn't be on nothing but Jesus. Uh, if you want to compare yourself to something, uh, compare it to Jesus. Uh, let me just get the hem of the garment. Uh, let me just get close to him. Uh, let me stand behind him uh, and walk in the footsteps of Jesus. This is who he is tonight. So many folks are wrestling. Many of us are wrestling with things tonight. He's in prison while he's writing to this church. And we think sometimes, I tell you if, you, ever, if you ever feel like you're overwhelmed, all you got to do is look what the disciples went through. Because I really believe, I heard I was, Drake was sharing, a preacher preached yesterday, he was letting me hear some little clips of it. But he talked about this preacher. He said, if Jesus was to come into church today to preach, we would run him out. Because, see, we're preaching a social, we're preaching a social skill religion tonight. Well, we want folks to come in and be comfortable. We want us to sit down and just kind of enjoy the moment and, and fellowship. And, uh, and I know we got a great uh, a fish fry in the bag. But as we come in tonight, this is, a kinda, this is kind of where the church is headed. And he talked about, he said, but Jesus, when he was on the earth. This is, what his, this, this, this is what his anxiety is coming in because Jesus wasn't about the social skills. He was about building disciples that would go out and preach in the highways and the hedges and lay hands on the sick and watch them recover. My, I'm telling you something tonight. Listen, we would almost throw him out tonight because he'd be preaching too hard because we soften this thing down. We sharpen our skills. Paul sitting here in prison and is dealing with this thing that's trying to overwhelm him anxiety. But he understands where this thing comes from. Paul faced many trials once he got saved. And it was in this writing that Paul began to theme as he wrote this Philippian 4 all the way down to the 9 I preached or, or read to tonight I, he, I, as I read this I just think that them whole few verses peace and joy peace and joy peace and joy and any time that the devil comes against you with a flood you can look back to peace and joy that's Jesus tonight Paul was facing trials he persecuted Christians Paul, called, Paul was what I call a good sinner he was murdering folks. He was killing people. Matter of fact, not just people, but he was persecuting the church. And it was why one day on that journey to prosecute some more, to persecute some more, to murder some more, that there's a light shone down. There's a light that shone down. It said that light, as the scripture described, was so bright and so strong and so overwhelming that it knocked him off his horse and it blinded him. But he faced many trials because of the things that he'd done. He, he faced many trials. And while yet he was in prison, he was writing a theme about peace. I wonder tonight when we look at our life and the little problems that try to bubble themselves up, your little problems. I wonder sometimes how much we really lean on Jesus. Listen, the problems you got tonight will go away if you grab hold of Jesus. The problems tonight that try to enter your mind, they can go away if you grab hold of Jesus. Paul's introducing you tonight to an anxiety killer, and his name, my God, is Jesus. Here he is in prison, writing about peace. Now, I just, I just thought, put my own self in his, in his shoes. And I'd do like probably 99% of us. And I'd start out like, oh me, oh my, I'm in such a bad place. 
I've been pushed to the side. I'm in just such a lowly place, but not Paul. Paul understood, listen, he done seen something. He done been in a battle. He done seen Jesus. He done touched Jesus. I wonder tonight, what's the value of that Jesus you saw? What's the value of that Jesus that you saw tonight? Paul saw Jesus. And because he saw it, because he saw Jesus, there was something that he held on to in the middle of that prison cells he was writing. He wrote about peace and joy. And after he was saved, there was a peace of God. There was a peace of God that only could come from Jesus. Anxiety. You think about anxiety. And it's not just a a select few. It's not just a couple folks. But all of us face anxiousness at times. Every one of us. And since 2020 and COVID hit, something's happened in our society. Something's happened in our culture where instead of us being able to get out and talk and, and socialize and fellowship one with another, even our church crowds have had a struggle to get back to the normal pre-COVID uh, capacity. But somewhere along the way, uh, we've gotten ourselves into a place uh, to where uh, we just kind of, we, we become anxious and all of a sudden the worst case scenario sits in our minds. And the devil, the voice is whispering. He's whispering. He's whispering. Things happen. Issues occur. Anxiety. It's in all of us. Paul, he learned how to remove this anxiety. He said to rejoice in the Lord. Paul's peace, it wasn't based on what, mind your peace, sweet, what we think peace is. We define peace by the chop, everything going good. All the bills is paid. The job is there tomorrow. All the, the school clothes have been bought. The children's grades are making good grades. In school, man, our friends all love us. There's no drama, no trouble anywhere. To us, that's called peace. Listen, listen, that's such a far, far backward definition tonight. Because, listen, in this life, you're going to face trials. In this life, you're going to face tribulation. In this life, things are going to pop up. But I come to talk to you about this man called Jesus that allowed Paul to sit in the middle of a prison and begin to write about peace and joy to me and you tonight that we could hold on to him. But he goes down, he said, rejoice in the Lord and his peace wasn't based on some type of sunny optimism like we, we counted. But here's, what's this? Now, Paul's was based on the ability to believe that his God, my God, your God, our God tonight is in control of whatever it is that is coming head on to me. I want you to watch this tonight. I want you to watch, listen to this. Listen, these things that you face, these little hiccups, these little bubbles, these little, these little, oh, I feel so sorry for myself. These things that, listen, they may caught you off guard. This stuff can sneak up on you. After all, we're looking for the sunshine. We're just looking and caring for the sunshine. We need the big rays for us to know that, man, this is a peace. We're looking for the rays of the sunshine to show us how, how peaceful it is. And, it, and things can sometimes, when you're looking at all that false, false peace, because I, I, I looked at the weather. Who got a 10-day weather app? Who got the 10-day? Can you pull up 10-day forecast? Click on it real quick. You see, we look at it today and the sun's shining. And we smile, oh. Oh, it's a beautiful day today. It's a beautiful day today. It's a beautiful day. It's sun shining. We're sitting on this Sunday, it says, uh, I'm just trying to help you. Listen, this stuff can sneak. With the forecast, it can't even hardly sneak up on us no more. But today it said 83 high, low of 60. It's going to be mostly sun. You got a few clouds in there. That means it's going to be a halfway all right day because, you know, Maybe it just rained a little bit tonight, not, not mess up my day. And then Monday it says a 40% chance of storms. And it's got that sun blotted out. And then Tuesday it's got a 70% chance of rain. It's got that blotted out. But if we can just hold on enough and make it to Wednesday, that's what's wrong tonight.
Too many of y'all trying to hold on, and you're missing some of the very best things that God has in front of you. There's blessings in store for right now today, right here now in this moment. But if I can just make it to Wednesday. Man, when I look at this thing right here, man, it, this thing here about doom and gloom all the way through, all the way through the next Tuesday. I don't see no day with the whole sun shining. But we're booking and we're planning and we're looking at this thing and we we posting it and all this and this stuff sneaks up on us. We allow it to sneak up. We allow this emotion to seek sneak in there on us. Because you know, I thought it was supposed to be sunny today. I thought the sun was supposed to be shining. And it sneaks in there on you. All of a sudden it goes to rain. Sometimes 40% chance means there ain't gonna be no rain. But if you live out there where we live at, you 40%, I might as well make that 100 because it's going to rain. If it's cloud, it's raining. But see, Satan, tonight, he loves the fact that we're looking at this, at this forecast and we're saying if the sun shines, it's a good day. If it's cloudy, it's not a good day. And it allows things by that mentality, that falseness of peace, it allows things to sneak up in your life. It allows things to sneak up even on the strongest of us tonight. Even on the strongest of us tonight. It allow that force, that whisper, that battle in your head. It will allow something to sneak in. Listen, how many have been caught off guard in here before? You raise your hand. That should be every hand in here. All of us have been caught off guard. All of us. Yeah. You ain't got to raise your hand. I know it. I know we have. I've been caught off guard. Wake up one morning. You get a fall. Oh. All of a sudden, here it comes. But you see what Paul's teaching us tonight about this thing called anxiety is that there's peace in our Jesus. That if I can just grab hold of Jesus, if I can just get my mind shaved and pushed into the, into the nail-scarred hands of Jesus. Because listen, here's what Paul's telling us, that it may catch you off guard, but not one thing that you go through tonight, not one thing catches him off guard. So it may sneak up on you. It may be coming wide open. All of a sudden you say, oh, oh I didn't see that coming. But I can tell you something tonight, uh, that you're serving a God that he saw everything. Uh, he knew it was coming. Uh, and that's why tonight we're to look to him. Uh, and Paul gives us these specific instructions. Rejoice in the Lord. Uh, always again, I say rejoice. His confidence is not in the clouds. It's not in that 10-day weather forecast. But his confidence tonight, uh, it lies only in Jesus. Only in Jesus. Only in Jesus. Chris, if you'll come to the piano, I want you to come real quickly for me. I got just a few more minutes, but just start playing something softly. Peace is found. Peace is found in rejoicing. Now, this is where Paul's telling us, as we're dealing with this, that we're going to deal with six parts of anxiety. And here tonight, Paul's giving us an ability to understand where peace and joy comes from. And he says that rejoicing is an anxiety killer. How do I know that? Here's what he said. He said, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And here's what Paul's saying. And here's, what I, here's the whole nail of the message for you tonight. That rejoice is the opposite action of how you feel. What does that mean? That means I, if I'd have had my way tonight, I'd have stayed home in that recliner. But Donald said, if he'd have had his way, he'd just resign. Just get in the car and travel to the mountain. But I come by to tell you that something, that something that hit Paul on that road to Damascus, Something that hit Paul in that jail that allowed him to write, my God, a note to you tonight. And he said, I want you to rejoice. And he used that word because it is opposite action of how you feel. Now watch this. Here's something else he did. I love words. I, love, I, like, I like looking at the words because they could have left stuff out, but they, they put it in there for a reason. He said, rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice means opposite of how you feel. I didn't want to come. 
I don't want to have to stick my nose in and study three or four. I, I, just, I just didn't. If, if I could have just pulled the recliner back, John, and just reared back, closed my eyes, man, just woke up in the morning, but I felt so good. But see, I come to help somebody fight a war tonight. Because it's in that sleepiness that we get ourselves in trouble. We fall asleep too much. We become a generation of sleepy. We become a generation that says, oh, you know, I, I, I can, I can, I, I hear him say this. I hear him say this. Listen to me. I hear him say this. They say, I ain't even got to go to church. I can worship God on my bass boat while I'm really in that business. I can worship God while I'm at the football game. Man, even after all, the Sabbath, the really Saturday, so on that, high, that college game, man, I can worship God. But the question is tonight is do you do that? And the answer to all of us tonight that says that and makes them accusations, the answer is no. And we wonder why, we wonder why in our sleepiness that the devil can come into our mind and start playing with you. And he's playing with the church tonight. He's playing, he's playing with the church I said he's playing with each other. We got to have some hell, fire, brimstone, anointing. My God, fire breathing preachers to rise up and begin to preach. My God, Jesus. Paul's sitting in prison. And I bet you 99% of our letters will be a whole lot different if that was you there instead of Paul. But Paul saw something inside that prison. He said, rejoice. It's the opposite action of how you feel. I don't feel like doing it, but I'm going to do it anyway. I can tell you every time I hadn't felt like coming to church, I make myself come in and I push. Because I'm trying to understand. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know the devil just looks for a small wedge or crack. He just looks for a small wedge or crack to come in. And I say, God, if I can just push myself, if I can just push myself. Once I get in there and I begin to rejoice, my Lord, what happened? What's what Paul? What's what Paul saying? He said, "Rejoice the opposite of what you feel." And you ask the question tonight: I can do it on the boat. I can do it at the ball game. My question is: Why don't you do it in church? Because here's what Paul told us. He said, "Rejoice, go opposite of how you feel." And he said, always. That tells me, that gives me, when I, when, I, when I process these words, that tells me that there's a duration there. That means that it don't stop, it don't quit. It don't matter where I go, I still should praise him. When I'm fishing, when I'm at the ball game, when I'm going to the rodeo, when I'm going to uh, visit folks, when I come to church, he said, always. Uh, he gave us a duration. When you do that, uh, it does a miracle, my God, to anxiety. It causes peace uh, and joy to begin to As joy and peace begins to form. And it's forming right here tonight in this building. Right here tonight in this building. Anxiety is a, is a critical feeling, a heaviness that you can literally feel. You feel the weight of it. When, when, when you look up the medical expert and they say, where do, you, where do you feel anxiety? They'll tell you, right here in your chest. You feel that heaviness right here. Right here in your chest. That's where it tries to set in. All that weight, all that heaviness. And Paul says, when you feel that anxiety, that pressure coming in, he says that we're to start rejoicing. That we're to start rejoicing. That we're to start rejoicing. So how do we do? How do we? How do we rejoice? There's, there's a little medical term or just a little phrase.
that it tries to, it tries to, I, I call it hope you, help you, hope you, help you. When you start talking about anxiety and how do I deal with it. And the phrase says, it's called three by three. Three by three by three, I believe it's that three by three phrase. I'm just going off memory if I'm right. And the first three is about objects. And so when you start to feel anxious, identify three objects. The Father, the Son, the Holy. I'm just, I'm just, I'm the Christ, the Father, the Son, the Holy. I'm just a Christian. You may look for a chair, a couch, a floor, a Father, the Son, the Holy. I'm trying to help the Father, the Son, the Holy. The three objects. I can almost tell right there when you're in trouble, when you start saying, I look at the chair, I look at the broom, I look at the corner. When I'm thinking about the objects, I said, name, name, find your three objects that's going to start to bring down the fear and the worry and the anxiety. I'm just, de I'm, I'm dealing, I'm dealing with this thing tonight. The three objects, the th it's three by three, three objects, find three objects, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. And but no matter what meeting I'm in, it don't matter what I'm, what you, where you're standing, it don't matter how, hell, but when you start thinking the Father, the Son, the Holy, boy, don't feel alone, boy, you can feel the power and the anointing start to just come to cheer, just like I feel I'm the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. So you identify the three objects. And then it says to move. <laughs> but this is some funny joke, man. It says then move three body parts. I'm going to identify because worry coming in, fear, anxious is com coming in. It's getting into my mind. It's putting me in a bad place. A lot of time we get there because we're out there beginning by, we're by ourselves somewhere. We're just getting in little dark corners and we're just all by ourselves. And listen, I'm, listen, I'm telling you, they say something about the Father, the Son, the Holy The Father, the Son, identifying them three. I, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. And I don't care what your denomination is, where you go to church, he's still the same. The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. And then it goes on down. He says, is this anxious and worse? It says, identify three by three. It said the three objects, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. It, it didn't say that. I, I just throw that in. It just said three objects. I just filled it in. And then it said move three body parts. And I always wonder... When they talk about anxiety, they talk about a lot of exercise and a lot of movement of your body, getting around and not just sitting around moping, and, oh, but moving your body around. It says it helps your body. Not just in physical weight loss, burning the calories, but it does something to, to that anxiety that's trying to consume you. Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. They don't want to move three parts. Well, when I, when I realized that the Father and the Son are in heaven and the Holy Ghost is right here, Right here, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. He's right, he's right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. I want you just, everybody just stand. We're feeling the coach. Stand with me right here. And watch this. The three objects. The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Then he said move three body parts. Here's, here's what I think. This ain't in there. This is just me. I'm just filling in the blanks. You can fill in the blanks. When that devil tries to come, listen, not, not, one of, not one of you in this room, chopper, the devil has not tried to attack you with fear and worry. Worried you're going to get sick. Worried that your child's going to get sick. Worried that you're going to lose your job. Worried that all, I mean, just all these great fear. The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. And then he said, then it said the three by three, the second. It says to move three body parts. And here's just what my mind said, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. They up here. So the first thing I want to move is I want to move this old noggin. I'm going to give you a little Pentecost. Just move your noggin. Everybody move your noggin. And now look up. <laughs> Get that thing loose and look up. Now watch this. I, I knew I was going to preach tonight. My wife didn't know. I knew. But we're leaving down in Musgrove to turn on to whatever that Thelma Highway is, like whatever it's called. We just turn. And she, she does like a daddy. They pull, they pull up, and, and I'm in this lane, and I just, and I turn. But they, they pull in this lane. They're pointing down, already pointing down there, and then they just turn and drive out. That's how Donna and Donna Jean does it. She said, oh, I don't be like daddy. And she pulls out like this right here. And she's looking, she said, and then she just drives. 
And she said, how do you do it? I said, I stand in the lane I'm supposed to be in. And I'll just say, if I'm going the other way, I say, and I just look. See, I'm trying to help us to see something tonight. I'm using a little, a little comedy to do it. But I want, us, I want this to stick with you tonight that there's a power in Je- And Paul recognized who Jesus was. Now, it said the Father, the Son, the Holy That's my three objects and the body parts. I just want to move that over because sometimes, man, we can get so stove up. I said, we can get so stove up, even in Pentecost, we can't even worship the Lord no more. And we wonder what's wrong. We can't even worship. We can't even move no more. We just get all stove up. I said, I don't know what's wrong with me. Yeah, do it again. And just look up high. Look up high. I'm talking about the object number one. Three objects. Object number one is I just want to lift up my head. Why? Because the Bible said my redemption dropped now. I want to lift up my head because my redeemer dropped now. I want to lift up my head tonight because the answer that I need, it comes. My God. It co- oh, my God Almighty. But I'm trying to get y'all back there to the fish. Oh, keep that red can that red light on me. Yes, sir. That's that's number one. Three body parts, three objects, three body parts. The head first. I look up the head. The second, the second, second body part, second object. I move up. very long hear me preach talk about how powerful your hands are that you can even make a mistake to scratch your head all of a sudden boy hell starts to tremble because the amount of energy that's released in heaven on your behalf when angels start to turn loose yet <laughs> listen I feel the Holy Ghost I'm trying to help you. I'm talking about an anxiety killer I'm talking about to help you right where you are there's things going on in folks lives Matter of fact, I ain't going to say nothing about it. I ain't going to say nothing about it. But I was sitting there this morning. I think I was talking to Danny or, or somebody. I can't remember who I was talking to. And I started asking about what's going on out there at the meal. I got brother in Sunday school. He started telling me a couple of things. I said, man, if I can tell I stay at home of it all week, man, how, how am I missing this stuff? But I'm telling you tonight, this thing's going on. Well, that devil's trying to grab whole folks, and he's trying to weight you down. And the whole time, revival's ready to bust loose. We got youth trying to come out the woodworks, and yet we get so weighted down. And Paul's giving us this anxiety killer. The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, the three objects. We raise our head, lift it up high. And we raise our hands, number two. Come on, man, this is this, this Pentecost. This, this, come on, there you go. A lot of hands already went up. Just raise them up. I said, our heads up. And my head, but I'm already starting to feel better. I'm already starting to make room for them fish in the back. I'm already starting to feel. Man, I can, standing in the middle of all this pressure, all this anxiety, all these problems. You said you 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 didn't you you chose to sit home and watch this tonight on the Facebook or whatever method of social media. But I'm asking you where you sit to lift up your head in your living room. Because you shouldn't be sitting home. You should be in a church. Some of you should be in a church. Unless you can't move, you should be in a church. I'm talking to somebody that can get up and, and get to you, but you should lift up your head. That's the great thing about social media. That's the great thing about social media. This is touching some folks. I said, it's touching some folks. But they something about the hand. I said, they something about the hand. They something about the hand. Three objects. I'm just giving you the thing. Said the terminology three by three to name three objects and then we'll move three body parts. That's what it said. You Google it, you'll see it too tonight. So I took my head. 
Because I want to look towards you. I want to see what Paul saw. I want to lift my hands. Because when my hands are lifted, boy, Jesus then rose up out of his seat. He not said he done rose up out of his seat and is flushing the angels that moves at the speed of light and they're flushing him. My God, you're like Moses, Aaron, and her as they rush to the battle. And then the last one, the body part. <laughs> Woo! Make that head just pick up. You know, the last few years, I don't watch the church fall asleep. That's why I don't see them big old heads just like we get sleepy. I'm talking about this is spiritual. It's spiritual. Not nobody's fall. You can't hardly fall asleep. I'm just saying. Spiritually, our big old head just so easy to just go on vacation because God blessed us. And it's so hard to raise our hands. We hadn't done it in so long. We hadn't worshipped and allowed the Holy Ghost to just take over. And then the third, the third body part, there's got to be something. When my head raises... And my hands raised, they got to be something that can move me from one place to the next. I don't want to stay here very long. That's why when I preach, I can't just stand, I can't just stand here. This, I'm, this is not, I'm not your preacher that does this. But I am a preacher that said, lift up your head, raise up your hands, and allow your feet, my God, to move you across my, the battlefield. My, let the feet move. See, it's just a little Pentecostal experience for you tonight. That if you learn, when you learn how to do these three things, you'll become an anxiety killer instead of letting anxiety kill you. I want to be opposite of what anxiety is. I want to be opposite. My head up, my hands up, and I want my feet moving. I said I need my feet moving. As long as them feet are moving, that old devil going to have a hard time keeping up with you. We got too many folks just standing. Standing in the same place. But I'm talking about a great revival, a move of the Holy Ghost. To where this Savior comes in like a flood. And he moves in your life. And he said you are to rejoice in the Lord always again. I say rejoice. Opposite of how you feel. What's this? You see, this altar tonight was created. This, this sanctuary, this altar, and we've got holiness marked off for this front chair hits. It's, it's, it's marked off. I said it's marked all the way off. It's got lines and it's got barriers. And there's something powerful tonight about this altar. When we get our feet in this altar and our head lifted up high, our hands raised, and our feet moving. Oh, but John, it's just, I'm not emotional. I didn't ask you to be emotional. I asked you to do opposite how you feel. I asked you to do opposite. I'm just giving you the def definitions of the word. Rejoice means to go opposite. It means to do opposite of how you feel. I don't feel like getting up there tonight. I don't feel like moving my feet. I don't feel like raising my hand. My God, in the midst of every battle you face, I can tell you there's one that will always feel like helping. My God, helping you.
I'm going to ask this tonight. Anxiety, sermon series one. Do you want this peace that will surpass all understanding? And if you do, I want you to come to this altar tonight with your head lifted. The Holy Ghost power. I need the Lord to feel my hope. I need some courage this hour. I need the revival for my soul. I need, I need, I need a revival for my soul in me.